Hey, what's up, my little tattletales? How are you guys doing today? If you are Meghan Markle and Prince Harry, you are wondering what the hell is wrong with everybody on Saltine Island. You guys, let's talk about the good, then we're gonna get to the bad, and then we'll get to the ugly. The good, listen, the Queen and Charles have recognized that they are coming off a little racist and they need some Meghan and Harry in their lives. They have literally not bent over backwards, but they basically gave Meghan and Harry everything they wanted in the beginning, respect, security, and also just that space to be private. We're gonna talk about the way they announced their grand plans that um, they are, they'll be joining the queen at St. Paul's Thanksgiving service for the biggest royal gathering since the wedding. Oh yeah, and Andrew will be there too. Listen, I definitely think this was a trade-off. I think Harry is doing this as a, uh, a favor to his family. And listen, it's their lives. Again, it's Harry's family, right? What can you do except for cold turkey them a la Thomas and Samantha Markle? I'm saying Harry, what can you do except with the whole turkey? That is the good. They're going to be there and they're going to be showing those British royals how it's done. And no, we don't need to be on the balcony to stunt. Our teeth going to be coming in singing stunting like my daddy. My little bit's going to be like bringing up the rear. I can't wait to see the kids. What's the bad? The bad part is the British media are already playing their stupid reindeer games, trying to turn this into negative. All they can do is obsess over them, but at the same time, they better not steal any of the attention and better have any Netflix cameras. And what's the ugly? Megan actually went down to Texas to talk about the charity. You guys, I haven't even addressed the charity because I'll be honest with you, every time I talk about it, it just brings me to tears. There's like so much ugliness in this world. And you know, I hope my channel can be escapism for you guys, but there's so much ugliness in this world. Megan hopped on the plane, bought snacks, stuff like that for volunteers. What, it's a great thing. What could go wrong? I'll tell you what is wrong. They li listen, th right now that is an ambulance outside the door for all the Sussex haters, for all the Sussex haters. Because instead of even focusing on the tragedy, instead of asking how anybody's doing, instead of asking what's going on, they literally have gone on a full off unhinged media campaign making allegations that Megan only showed up for publicity, bought Netflix cameras, and did things just for show. Do you know what the thing is right now with Salty Island? They are losing the plot. They are so literally overwhelmed with waiting for a personality, Katie and Lord Voldemort, that they don't understand that, that, that Megan is a different type of person. And this isn't singing Megan's praises because I don't know her personally, but I have seen enough about Will and Kate shenanigans. Kate was the one that went to that visual of that slaying girl, literally had a photo op with palace people, counted it as a working day, right? Because you know she only works 10 days out the year. And then when it was all over, she left quietly to be swept back to her life of luxury. And then the police moved in and roughed up the protesters that were literally having a visual for a slain girl, of course, that died over in the UK. Now let's juxtapose this with Megan. See, this is why they're so mad because they're assuming that Megan did the same exact mess Kate did, but no, 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 no. Megan is cut from a different cloth and that cloth does not include a million and one buttons, right? As a matter of fact, they had to actually release one of the reporters covering it. I think it was Buzzfeed had to actually issue the statement saying, let's get into the things that people really want to know. Meghan Markle did not bring any cameras, Netflix or otherwise to the community center where she dropped off the donation. She avoided the news camera and reporters that were already at the community center. Volunteers told uh, the reporter that she snuck into the kitchen through the back door. Imagine somebody comes to do something nice. They don't bring cameras. They don't do anything. She was operating in the capacity as a mother. A lot of volunteers said they didn't, even, they didn't actually, all the volunteers said they didn't even know who she was until she skirted out the door. And even then somebody had to tell them and they were a bit sad because they're like, oh, we wish she had known. They thought they were, she was a neighbor. They thought she was just a regular woman. She was there as an official capacity as a mother. Imagine how decrepit and hate filled your heart has to be that you automatically assume 
that someone that is responding to a tragedy is doing the same thing that you guys did when you were looking for publicity. Who's worse? The people that accused her of it or the people that accused her of it because they have pulled those same shenanigans. It's actually pathetic when you think about it. It's also pathetic. Granted, I haven't spoken on the tragedy, but the reason I haven't is because I'm not, I'm, I'm not a politician. I'm not a soft diplomat. My job, and I hope what you guys appreciate, is bringing a little light or joy or laughter to your life, right? You can turn the news on and cry, I'm here, ha ha, to make you laugh. I'm being serious, that, that is my job, right? Chief President of Laughs. But the fact of that William, Kate, all these people are supposed to be self supplements. They're supposed to care no matter where you are. They're mom. Maybe they don't care. Maybe they can't speak. But this is when you think about it, why Harry and Meghan left? Because service is universal. Service is what you choose to do. You guys don't know what I do off camera. What, what I choose to do is of my service. The fact that even though the British royal family want to be the brightest stars in the universe, they're not prepared to handle this new order where there are tragedies. And tragedies just don't happen in Little Britain. They happen all over the world. And if you want to keep your currency of being soft diplomats, your currency of being of service, you just can't be of service to your little nation state. You need to be of service to the world. Or if you do, you risk becoming only important in your little nation state. But the problem is the British monarchy still wants to be that crown jewel of the world. I think they must mistook the oppression of colonialism, colonialism and everybody having to respect them and everybody having to pay attention to them as people really respecting them and really, really paying attention to. They are fading into obscurity. And this obscurity is happening because of their own chains, their own rules, their own tides that bind them, their own indifference. The only thing that you think that you are at the center of this world and everything that happens out, outside of that is just noise. And you're literally making yourself into noise, white noise, it, exclu it, it, forgive the pun, but literally by Megan just going there and doing what she can as a person of means and access and showing that she does care with nothing, right? And again, I would never think that, I, I, I don't wanna believe that it was for a stunt. I don't see any evidence. So I'm not gonna say it's for a stunt, but I will say that Megan, um, showed the British royal family what they could be, what they should be, what they will be if they just put some work in. And the British family smeared her, tarred, feathered, ran her out of town. And now they want to bring them back into town because even though they thought they didn't need them, they found that without them, they faded into obscurity faster than they thought. William brought shame on his ancestors, right? All the colonialists were turning in their graves, right? Shame on the answers with that disastrous Caribbean tour. They went out to the football game where he is present. I think it was Len Manchester. No, it was Lee. Whatever. Uh, don't quote me on that, right? But it was a football game and he is the captain of the football association. He got loudly, Tottenham, he got Tottenham. He got loudly, loudly booed. The monarchy's falling. It's falling because of the people that are running it. And now the people that are running it think they are going to get a little bit of the shine, but baby, let me just say this. I will be doing wall-to-wall -wall coverage of this and dragging them. I know everybody was involved in the Johnny Depp trial, but baby, this is my Johnny Depp trial. I want to see how William and Kate freak out where they do all this pomp and circumstance and everybody's like, meet. And Megan just blinks and the crowd's like, yes, the people's queen. Give them what they want, girl. I can't wait to see that. So I will be covering it. But again, it's so funny to me, right? That which nourishes you will destroy you. Two years ago, if you had looked at the, what was happening with Harry, Meghan, William, Kate, and the British monarchy, we might have gotten a completely different um, uh, uh, take on that. But now how the tables have turned. And that which nourishes you Meghan and Harry, which are the only interesting thing about the British royal family and by the looks of what they're performing, the only, the only interesting thing that's going to be for a while, that is nourishing the monarchy and it's going to destroy them. Listen, I hope the tabloids and the British monarchy have fun with their heat score of having the sexes there so people will pay attention to the Queen's Jubilee. They're not going to be on the balcony. They will, in fact, be at the church. I can't wait to see what met. You know, Kate 
is probably so worried. I can't wait to see what Megan wears because last time she showed up in sunny little Britain, I know it rains for days, but last time she showed up in little Britain, she shut that down. And Kate is still copying those styles from three years ago. She's still copying those styles. Listen, I can't wait to see what Megan cosplay Kate does. And I can't wait some new new that Megan is going to sprinkle on and get all the girls in a bother. Woo, you guys, don't forget, I'm doing coverage. Make sure you check back next week because I'm going to be dropping stories every single day, maybe even twice a day. And we're going to be doing fashion roast and drags. Oh, I can't wait to see what Kate's new Botox looks like, y'all. Listen, thank you so much. And I will talk to y'all later. Let me know what you think in the comments. Talk to y'all later. Bye.